This National Professional Anglers Association video presentation is brought to you by Missouri Secrets Tackle and 241 Inc. Productions. On a water first date, I had a lot of fun putting this together. It is, um, um, I've never given this talk before. I have done the hook removal talk, but what I try to do is design something for the guide and the tournament angler. It could also pertain to anybody that takes anybody fishing because whenever you take anybody fishing, you're in charge and you're responsible for everything in the boat. So I'm gonna, it's how to care for your customer and your co-angler. First thing is always remember you're accountable and always remember that there are attorneys that will hold you accountable. So think about that. So you wanna prevent issues. The best way to prevent issues is to have friendly customers and co-anglers. Be considerate to them, just be respectful to them. And uh, they'll treat you better if something goes wrong. Have good insurance. You have to have good liability insurance to cover yourself if something goes wrong and somebody says, well, it's your fault. And of course, the Worldwide Marine is the best insurance. I don't, anybody can argue that, I don't know. Well, I can't argue it, it's the best insurance. And get a captain's license if you do a lot of guiding. And, uh, and if you're gonna be in the professional angling business for a long time, just get a captain's license. They train you in a lot of things. You get basic life support and uh, it's a good thing to have. So how to cause issues. Treat them like they're not important. You know what happens when you get treated on, like you're unimportant, you wanna get back at them. Treat, them. treat them with respect and have poor insurance. That's the best way to get, you know, these are the ways to get, get in trouble, okay? So two types of captains I t I'm talking about is the guide and the tournament angler. They both have different agendas, okay? The, the guide wants the customers all to come back so he get paid again. The tournament angler with the co-angler doesn't care if the guy comes back. He just, he just has them for that day. You know, it's a business agreement for that day. So that changes when you make decisions. You know, as simple as if somebody's seasick. If you're in first place if somebody's seasick, the interest you have of going to shore is different than a guy who's guiding five people that have come every year and his wife gets sick. And you say, well, we're not going to shore. That's not a good move because you might lose customers. So there's, just, there's different pressures in when you make decisions. Now I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna briefly cover a few things today, everything from chest pain to dehydration, eye injuries, hypothermia, motion sickness, all those things happen in the boat, sooner or later. Head injuries, diabetes, you know, diabetics get in your boat. What happens if they get uh, low blood sugar? Um, seizures, we know that in the professional walleye circuit, there's been a guy in the boat that has had seizures in the boats at multiple times. Did you win a tournament with him? Yeah, I did. I won two with him. <laughs> no, never had a seizure. <laughs> um, lacerations, um, you know, that can happen in the boat. You know, I mean, it, uh, you know, usually we don't get caught with knives in the boat, but I had to sew up Dan Plout Sr. because he got his thumb on a northern tooth, which then ripped a nice little laceration on his thumb. You know, it was before, you know, when he was pre-fishing and, um, and that had to be sewed up. And then of course back and neck injuries. Um, and last is we do get hooked with, and so we're gonna have a little unhook removal too. So this is what I think you should do if you, somebody says they have chest pain in your boat. You should just go to the landing, call 911, and tell them which landing you're heading to. You don't want to deal with anybody with chest pain in the boat. Just go to the landing. You know, there's, you know, we've all we're in the room right now. It's all men, so we've we've all heard about guys having uh, heart attacks, and you know, this is the classic one. The guy says, oh, he looks sick. He says his chest hurts. He gets gray. He's sweaty, and he may say his arm hurts. Well, you know, I think most of us have heard that and you go, oh man, that's terrible. But the problem is, is that 
all, all chest pain and heart pain is not classic. And, so, and people that have chest pain that's from their heart minimize it. They don't want to believe that it's their heart. So they go, nah, it's just heartburn. So if you listen to them, they may die, okay? So if you've got somebody with chest pain, I think that's just one of the things you just say, you know, it's over, the day's done, I gotta take them in. Because if you make a mistake, he talks you in to keep fishing, he may die. Women, dehydration. Women are the problem, okay? Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's a guide trip or if it's a tournament. Women show up dehydrated. Why do they show up dehydrated? Because women do not want to take their pants off in front of strange men. They have to take their pants off to pee. And they don't want to do that. So they don't drink anything. So if you have a 90 degree day and you have a woman in the boat, there's a high chance she's going to get dehydrated and she may faint on you. Some men cannot urinate in a boat that's moving and rocking. So that guy may show up uh, dehydrated too. So how do, what do you do to prevent it? The night before, you talk to them about it. It's an issue, it, why, you know, you're gonna, it, why, why not just get it done with? Tell them that you know that if you need to go to the bathroom in the boat, I don't want you to get dehydrated. I don't want, you might faint on me, you know, you might, uh, you hurt yourself. So let's figure out what we need to do to make you comfortable. And, you know, some of them might be the live well, some of them is the bucket, some of them, um, you know, it's just, and some of them don't even care. <laughs> and so you, you have to, you have to talk openly with them about it. Bring extra water, always. We've all run out of water because we misplanned, and it's not a good thing. Bring extra water. They get dizzy when they stand. If they faint, don't deal with them when they faint because you don't know why they fainted. You just assume that it's because they're dehydrated. You don't want to deal with that. If somebody faints, it could be a lot of things. That's not something that you know the, the boat captain needs to deal with. Eye protection. Well, the main thing in eye protection I'm going to talk about is <coughs> snagged hooks. Because when, you, when you're pulling on a hook and it comes free, it's coming directly from where you were pulling, which is, can end up in your face. So the best way to never get, you know, who cares? I mean, if it gets stuck in your cheek, it's not any big deal. But if it hits you in the eye, that's a big deal. So wear glasses, always. You know, you wear glasses for other reasons too. Prevents cataracts. If you don't wear sunglasses, you're at higher chance of cataracts. So you wear your sunglasses to protect your um, eyes. Now, glass can shatter. You know, most, there are real glass glasses. Most of them are plastic and it doesn't matter. And I talked to a, um, an eye doctor and he said the polycarbonate are really good. They're plastic glasses that don't break, you know, but I've never heard of any glass shattered. And I think the, the, what I want you to take away from this is just wear sunglasses all day, not just because of the, you know, to prevent the eye surgeon from making a car payment, but from, from the uh, eye injuries. Now hypothermia, okay, that can happen too. Um, we fish when it's 45 degrees out and the, the biggest cause of hypothermia is when they get wet. They get wet, they get cold. They can get so cold that they can't fish. So if you are, you know, if you're a guide, you're probably gonna have to take them in if they get really cold. If you're a tournament angler, you have extra rain gear. You have a net, I always keep a stocking hat and a fleece vest in a giant Ziploc bag hidden away that I never use. I've used it once. Had a big guy just like you, a big, young, healthy guy in the tournament. Didn't bring enough clothes. We were fishing. Next thing you know, he's sitting in the chair. He says, I'm too cold to fish. <laughs> he was done. So I took out 
10 hand warmers and broke them all open, put them in the pockets around his chest. What does it do? It gives off heat. And I gave him the vest, put a stocking hat on him, and had him do some exercise in the boat. <laughs> what does exercise in the boat do? Creates heat. So he had the hand warmers in, he had heat, then he, had, he was covered up well. In 30 minutes, he was fishing. But the most important thing is you got to keep them dry because it doesn't matter what you do. If they're wet and cold, you're not gonna, they're not going to recover. Motion sickness, okay? How many of you have been motion sick? You never want to be motion sick again, do you? It's one of the worst things for most people. <clears throat> you know, commonly what they say is, you know, just shoot me. Because <laughs> they're, they, they're so sick, they'd rather be dead than feel it. Um, Here's the treatment for it, nothing. You can't do anything once you get motion sick. They're done, it's, it's over. The only thing you can do is prevent it. Um, I'll finish on that. I, I've seen people with two kinds of um, motion sickness. I've had them in my boat. I've, you know, most of them, they just curl up. You know, they throw up, curl up, and lay on the bottom of the boat and say, you know, I'm, you know either take me in or keep fishing, but they're just, they don't care about nothing. And some, I had, I've had two that have actually thrown up all day and fished all day. You know, they get sick, they throw up, then they say they're back fishing again. And I remember one on uh, Lake Erie, you know, northeast wind, you know, by the Bass Islands, 30 mile an hour northeast wind, that guy threw up all day and fished all day. You wouldn't even know he was sick. But if you're gonna use Dramamine, you know, they sell it at the drugstore. It doesn't work after they're sick. You basically give it to them, you know, or for yourself. You give it to you the night before and take it again in the morning. If, any, if you know knot tying, okay, you tie knots, you get sick. If the bilge pump doesn't work and it's really windy out and you're down in there, you're done. You know, there are some people that don't get motion sick and they can do anything, but if everybody has a tendency to them, just no not tying, and the head has to be up all the time. And don't put them in the front of the boat. I, I remember I had a pharmacy trip, I took some uh, pharmaceutical reps out, and um, I was at Anchor at Mille Lacs, you know, it's windy. The guy gets up in the front, I said, you don't want to get up there. I said, this, you know, you're going to get sick. He said, I've never been sick in my life. Well, an hour later, we had him on shore, and then we went back out fishing. It's just, it's just too much motion in, in, the, in the bowels, what does it? Head injury. People can fall and, and hit their head in your boat. If anybody has been knocked out or is confused in any way, you need to take them to the emergency room because when you hit your head, you can have internal bleeding. And it acts the same just like if you had a, just a mild concussion. So you just have to take him in. It was like I was at a tournament in Fort Peck. Paul Moline came, you know, they, uh, Mark Dorn came up to me and asked me, he said, will you take a look at uh, Paul Moline? He's acting confused. Something hit him in the head when he was driving in. I said, no. <laughs> I said, you take him to the emergency room. They'll do a CAT scan on him, see if he has any bleeding. I can't do anything for him. So, diabetes, we're not gonna talk a lot about that, but diabetics can get low blood sugar. So what happens when a diabetic gets low blood sugar? They get confused. They don't think clearly. So you know, what do you do, you feed them. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, sugar is better, but you gotta feed them. So if you got a diabetic that gets, it doesn't, just, just give them food. You know, liquid sugar is better, so pop. <clears throat> Seizures. Okay, I said we had, we had um, you know, we, we had one um, co-angler that <coughs> had seizures in the boats. A seizure is a terrible thing to watch, okay? It's just, you know, when you have a, there's many different types of seizure, but the big ones, they, what they do, what, what really is happening is the brain is firing all the nerves in their body. So every muscle is contracting. So they are jerking, jerking. That's why they jerk. All the muscles are contracting. They can't breathe very good because the chest muscles are contracting. So they turn blue and they look terrible. It looks like they're gonna die on you. And they, 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 they rarely die on you. 
the best thing for you to do is just stay out of the way, clear the area so they don't hurt themselves, don't stick fingers in their mouth because they might bite it off, and because um, their, their, their mouth muscles are doing the same thing, they're all contracting, and the guy's unconscious. So you just leave him alone and uh, you know, protect him, he'll wake up, he'll be confused, and then you take him in. Like I told the guy, that I said, if you have a seizure and fall overboard, I said, I can't lift you in, you're too heavy, I'll just hold you to, <laughs> until you wake up. <laughs> Lacerations. Okay, we can get cut in the boat. Well, we do really don't want to go in, okay? So put pressure on it right away. You don't use, don't use tourniquets, just put pressure on it. Pressure stops the bleeding, just like it does in a water hose. It doesn't make any difference. You squeeze the water hose, it doesn't bleed, it doesn't, no water comes out. So you put pressure on it until it stops bleeding. And any kind of tape works, stretchy tape works better, okay? You put tape on, which then puts pressure on it and stops the bleeding. You, um, it'll bleed for a while, then you just take tape off, wrap it up when it's, when it's dry. You, you don't have to go in. If you're in first place in the tournament and you got three hours of fishing time left and, the, and you cut yourself, you don't have to go in. You know, the reason you want to get it sewed up right away is you don't get infection. So the, the longer you wait means more likely you're going to get infected. So you, you got about six hours for an extremity. And then it's, you have a higher chance of getting infection, which is not good. But back injury. How would you like to be the co-angler of the 25-year-old pro who's in first place on day one? On day two, there's a 25-mile-an-hour wind, a 20-mile run. Who wants to be right along with that guy? I don't. So what, do you, you know, what can happen with that? Well, you can hurt your neck and your back. Now, a, a guide isn't going to go because he's got a different agenda for his customers. But the tournament angler is going to go. And so if you're the co-angler and you're the, well, this is for advice for the guy that's with the co-angler too, you just don't want to get him to back injury. What happens is that you can hit those waves, the compression on your spine can give you a herniated disc or a compression fracture. We've had both of those on the circuits. You know, compression fractures is, is uh, where the vertebrae just gets crushed and breaks. So. You tell them to use their legs. They don't, you don't want their butt to hit the seat. Butt hits the seat, compresses. So they use your legs. You know, half stand up, and you know, at, <clears throat> at the, the next day their legs are going to feel like you know just awful. But that that recovers. You know, if you hurt your back, it doesn't recover. So tell them to use their legs. And it's the same thing for you guys. Now, we got smart. You know, we all use suspension seats now. There's different ones out there. I've been using smooth moves for years. It's the best thing I ever found. Actually, I found them before Brad King started selling them. I had one in my boat. And uh, it didn't work anywhere as well. But um, all the suspension seats do is make it less pounding on your back, less compression. Now hook removal, it's really important to do that because to learn how to do hook removal because if you can't remove the hooks, you're, you have to go in. Um, it depends, you know, if you get it in a six year old, you're done, okay? You know, you're not gonna get it. It doesn't matter what you tell them, you're not gonna get the hook out. Um, so there are many ways to get a hook out. <laughs> Choice one, drive to the emergency room, I think that's just the worst thing to do because this is what's gonna happen. First of all, you're done fishing. Then you're in the emergency room waiting. You know, that's, to me, that's just a waste of time. So you can cut it off and keep fishing, or you can remove it in the boat. Now to cut it off, you can just take a, um, I have different uh, tools over there. I'm gonna show you, I have it on a slide too. But you can cut the hook off and you can immobilize it so if it doesn't move, it doesn't hurt, and you can keep fishing. Okay, you might have duct tape in your boat. We all have black tape in the boat, okay? 
So it stabilizes the hook, covers it up so it doesn't catch anything, and you can just keep fishing. So you just cut, cut off everything except the, uh, the part that's sticking in you and just wrap it up. Now on the top there, that's all I did, just like that. And then just, uh, you know, you can put, tear off with a um, piece of your t-shirt, cover it up with that, wrap it up with uh, black tape, and keep fishing if you want to. And then take, go in later, and then wait later. You know, how do you cut it off? Well, we all have needle nose pliers, and if you get a thicker hook, it's really hard to cut them. So the one in the middle, you know, side cutter, that works pretty good too, but the best is a really cheap bolt cutter. You get them about 10 bucks, they rust like crazy. They, they're, they're, just, they're, just, they're just cheap. You, you may use, I've used one in uh, probably 15 years in the boat. And it's, um, you know, it's just, when, when you want to cut a hook, it just cuts it off. Now, I, I had a good question before I started the seminar. I said, what about the big, thick musky hooks? You know, and I'm not even sure on that. You know, I guess if I was a musky fisherman, their hooks have gotten bigger. I might go to a bigger, bigger bolt cutter to, you know, to, to bring in the boat. It's a little more urgent when you have a, you know, 40-pound musky attached to you than a, than a four-pound walleye. So you can... It's important that they're sharp, too. Don't grab that one out of your toolbox that you never use. Buy a brand new one, put it in the boat. What was that? Oh, it's just so important that you get a good player, a good side cutter, and not a... Yeah. Not just one that's been laying around. And sure. Just throw in the boat, you know, that's so important. If it's new and it's sharp... Yep, I agree. That'll save you so much pain or your buddy. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, so you can, you can um, this is the remove it by the push through method. So what, you, what you're doing is you're, like in that picture, you're pushing the barb through and then cutting the barb off. You know, does it hurt? Yeah. Not as bad as a kidney stone. <laughs> Anybody who's had a kidney stone goes, yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> um, you know, if you're gonna push it through, you push it too fast and it doesn't hurt as much. You've all been to the doctor's office, had the nurse give you the shot where they go in slow and when they go in fast. If you go in fast, you don't feel it. If you go in slow, it hurts. So if you're going to push that barb through, you just ram it through. Don't be nice because it's going to hurt less. And then you just snip off the barb and back it out and you're done. This is a nice picture of it, that's all. The only pain is pushing it through. Now, there are a lot of places you can't push it through. You know, it just depends on the location of where the, where the hook is. But uh, if you can push it through, it, it, it works good. I had to do it on my foot one time because I, I had a pair of sandals that had an opening in it. They got the hook in there. And so I had to cut the hooks off. Well, then I couldn't do the string method on it. Well, I'm going to show you next. And so I, so I had to push it through. You know, it was just me and the boat. And I'm not going to quit fishing for a hook. So, you know, this is my favorite method. It's called the string method. And uh, it, it, it works so well, it looks like magic, okay? And, um, and what it does is that you are basically just snapping a string that's attached to the hook, and it gets out. Now, in my Pig skin is just like human skin, okay? So I have some uh, samples up there, and uh, so you can practice this method. It's something you should all learn how to do. It, it just really works. How many have taken a hook out with the string method? Oh, well, it looks like I'm teaching, the, I'm, <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir. Yeah, it works. You know, the, uh, the important thing about it is that you have to know where you, it's kind of like um, getting your jig out that's snagged. The hook is going to come out so fast that you don't want anybody in the way. Because then you got to take another hook out. I mean, it comes out like a bullet. And if it doesn't come out like a bullet, you didn't pull hard enough. So, I got a hook in this. It's a, there's the hook hanging in there, you know. 
I can't get it out. All I do is take a string and you push it like this. I hold, I'm holding it with one hand and all I do is this. No, no hook. It's like magic. Now I gotta find that hook. Up, oh, stayed right there. Now when you practice over here, I want you to practice shoot, pulling the hook towards the wall, okay? <laughs> and um, when doesn't this work? Well, number one is that if you can't get a nice pull on it, you can't push down on the hook. Um, you know, there's some locations if you get it around somebody's eye, I'd just recommend that you, you know, go in and uh, go to the emergency room, you know. But if it's on somebody's extremity, um, it just works. And the only way that you'll ever believe that it works is once, is once you do it once or if you practice on the pigskin. If you practice for a little bit, pull it a few times, it's like, it's, um, you'll get it. It's a, it, it, was, uh, it used to be called the Novus Scotia. Uh, apparently, those fishermen there figured it out. So, I use any kind of line in the boat. You know, I like buoy lines, but you know, you could you could take monofilament and just wrap it, you know, five times around so you get a little thicker. You know, um, fire line works really good. Lead line will work, and. You just, the important thing is you push the shank down. I can show you up here too. And it, what, what it does is that, okay, if you pull slow, the barb just kind of hangs up. And really what the barb is, is tearing through the skin, okay? But it's going, by the speed of it, nobody feels it. They all just look at you like, that's it? They're expecting pain. And it's just, uh, it, uh, it's almost painless. Snap quickly. So there's another picture just showing you the uh, uh, where you push on the hook and the way the string pulls. Quick snap. Now you can do this if you can't find any string, which I don't think anybody well, you can do this with the pliers too. You just put the pliers on the same spot as the where you'd put the string and do and still hold it down, you know, hold, push the hook down, but just do a quick snap. I've done it that way, it doesn't work as good, but it's another option. If you, when you, you push down on the you, hook. When you push down, but you want a, a tough skin, but That's when you push hard. down like that, it, it, um, it, the barb, then when it comes out, it's actually going through the part of that hole that, 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 that it first came in. in. Mm -hmm. It still has to tear free a little bit though. Just to get out. Yeah.